Now that we have the Zohar in English, and I'm sure that many of you may have been aware about what the superficial subject of this week's reading is about, and came to the conclusion, no, it just couldn't be about what superficially it says. We've learned that the Torah, the scroll, is nothing but a code. It is a code that the Zohar has unraveled, has revealed the inner meaning, the information which pertains to the 99% of reality, not the 1% physical, material aspect of this world. And that's what the Zohar reveals for us. The laws pertaining to what? Says the Zohar, we're talking about not slaves, but what we are referring to is the soul. For many of us, we are indeed slaves. The 99% of us is a slave to the physical reality known as a body. What does that mean? Or the 1% of our consciousness which is the rational consciousness, which dictates in our daily lives, not proactivity, but reactivity. We react. Something happens from without, from without, we immediately react to it. We're not free. We're not proactive most of the time. And so here, only with the Zohar's interpretation, mind you, can we see an entirely different picture discussing the different levels of souls, discussing soul mates, discussing business relationships. For all of these aspects, are basically concerned with the 99% of who we really are. And we are not a finger. We are not an eye. But rather this body as we experience it, as we know it, is to respond, is to behave according to the direction of what our souls dictate. But unfortunately, we're, most of us are governed by the 1% of the rational consciousness, which incidentally is Satan's playing field. Because if we begin to examine the way we behave, what we will notice is a reactive nature of almost every activity that takes place in our daily lives. And so, to elevate, to expand our consciousness, so that our consciousness, the 99% of us, no longer acquiesce no longer become subject to the power of that one percent, the body, which for a normal, intelligent human being, one might ask, wait a second, is Torah indicating that our 99% can be subject to 1%. The 99%, our soul, 
acquiesces, surrenders to the whims of a body. And my friends, the more we began, we begin to examine our behavior, not from a perspective of that 1%, but delving somewhat beneath that superficial event and begin to question, now why did I make such a stupid decision like that? How many of us have repeated that in our lifetimes? You gotta be real stupid to have done that. And along comes our ego and says, well, we'll make the statement, but certainly we do not believe it. But the fact remains, that so many times in our lives have we opted for that little call that I know it's probably the wrong thing for me to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. Oh my, wait a second. What, what, what kind of a conclusion is that I'm going to do it anyway? There's something there telling you this is wrong, and yet something else which we know that 1% is the domain, is the playing field of Satan. That, that domain is, is telling you, that 1%, yeah, do it anyway. Or, on the contrary, how many times have we had the 99% of us within us say, this is a good thing. Why don't you do it? And how many times have we said to ourselves, I know it's probably what I should be doing, but I'm not going to do it. You have here and, and in one instance where something inside is telling us, don't do it. And yet we then say to ourselves, but I'm going to do it anyway, or the reverse. Doesn't make any sense. You imagine Zohar teaching us on how to expand our consciousness, how that way we then can resist the playing field of Satan that inevitably brings destruction, chaos, pain and suffering, we haven't got a chance at times to overcome that 1%. And along comes this week's reading, couched in cattle breeding, couched in farming, couched in slavery, all spelling so clearly the playing field of where we might be if we did not elevate our consciousness, if we did not expand our awareness, that's where you're going to be. What a wonderful opportunity. A wonderful opportunity so that we no longer become slaves to the whims and whimsicals of this physical reality that somehow such, has such a broadening power An unaccountable power. The numbers don't fit. The numbers don't work out. That we should ultimately develop into a chaotic condition, into pain and suffering. This is, my friends, what Pasha Bishpatim is all about. How we can truly find our soulmate. How we can truly find our soulmate, whether it be in marriage, whether it be in business, whether it be in every and any other aspect of human relationships. Expand. Expand this awareness to see things as they really are. Shabbat Shalom.